If you want to hear a fountain pen enthusiast scream, hand them a notebook with terrible paper. If you don't have adequate paper, you will miss out on all the enjoyment of writing with a fountain pen. A common problem with ordinary notebooks is that they tend to have lighter, absorbent paper stock that turns into a messy mush once liquid fountain pen ink touches it. Don't blame the notebook manufacturer. They assume that most people, if they handwrite at all, write with a ballpoint or pencil. For fountain pen geeks like myself, we love to be persnickety about our paper, not just because we spend the extra money and we like to spend extra money, it's because we want our writing experience to be the best. And believe it or not, the best paper isn't going to cost a fortune to obtain. In this video, I share what makes a notebook great for fountain pens and give you a select list of recommendations for fountain pen friendly paper notebooks available at Goldspot. To illustrate the differences in paper types, I inked three pens. We have the Sailor Pro Gear 21 karat medium nib inked with Pilot Ear Suzuku Compeki. We have the Leonardo Momento Zero Grande 14 karat gold elastic fine nib, which is a flex nib, and it's inked with Sailor Manyo Haha. And last but not least, we have a Lamy Safari with a 1.1 millimeter stub nib, and it's inked with Waring Yule Pride and Prejudice. So as you'll see in the writing samples, we have three different types of lines. We have a medium monoline type pen in the medium point sailor, which is actually more like a fine European type of nib. Then we have a flex nib, which will give you a little bit more ink due to the ebonite feed that's here and also the line variation. So it'll put a little bit more ink on the paper. And then you have a stub nib, which will give you a broad stroke on the way down and it's inked with a saturated ink that has sheen. So the Manu Haha's got shading and then the Pilot Ear Suzuku Compeki is kind of like a middle of the road. It's got a little shading and a little bit of hint of sheen. So we'll see which papers bring this out the best. To compare and contrast the notebooks you'd find at Goldspot versus the ones you might pick up at a local office supply store, I grabbed a few notebooks from a local Staples. Stay tuned to the end and I'll let you know how you can enter for a chance to win all of the notebooks I tested in this video. So what makes the best notebook for fountain pens? First, let's talk about what makes an unfriendly notebook for fountain pens. First, there's feathering. And as the name implies, feathering is when a line of ink absorbs into the page, spreading like the edges of a feather. In this example of the Staples notepad, I took a picture of how the manual haha just seems to just kind of feather outwards from the edges of the letter. Um, it also does it a little bit too in the Ir Shizuku ink as well, um, but it just, the line doesn't hold perfectly in a crisp edge. Like it just feathers out slightly. Some notebooks may even do it to a higher degree depending upon how absorbent the paper is. And it tends to be that recycled papers usually would do this a lot more so than other types of paper. Bleed through is when ink soaks through the entire paper and is visible on the other side. And with this moleskin journal, which is supposed to be kind of like a premium fancy journal, you see that on the other side of the page, the ink is seeping through on pretty much all three colors. It's not just show through, that this is bleed through onto the other side of the page. Fountain pen friendly notebooks should not have feathering or bleed through when writing with most nib sizes and ink choices. And I can't cover every single nib size and ink choice because there are some extreme cases where you might want to throw in a quadruple broad or a 1.9 millimeter stub with a super saturated ink like organic studio nitrogen and um, it's really going to be very very few even fountain pen friendly papers that could handle that sort of barrage of ink, uh, that, that deluge of ink on the paper. Um, but when I say most, I mean you should be able to reliably write on the page of a fountain pen friendly notebook if you have extra fine through, let's say, broad and a stub nib, or even with a flex nib. But just as long as you're not throwing a ton of ink on the paper, I think you should be fine with a majority of notebooks, but fountain pen friendly notebooks could handle the really you know, hardcore stuff as well. Now, ghosting or show through is when you can see writing on the other side of the page. Now, this is not a deal breaker for most, but paper that tends to ghost can be difficult to read if you write on both sides of a page. Certain thin papers can handle fountain pen ink very, very well, like this, uh, this Tomoe River paper that's in the Colorverse Nebula note 
it doesn't have any feathering nor any bleed through, but it has a decent amount of show through. So some people may only use this on one side due to the high degree of show through, which is like I said, not a deal breaker for some, but for others who want to use both sides of the page, yeah, pretty much. So besides not feathering or not bleeding through, the best friendliest fountain pen papers should also have the following characteristics. The paper should show the ink color's true brilliance and vibrance. The paper should show the depth of shading possible with your particular nib and ink combination. When ink pools inside each written letter, the value range should be well defined. For saturated inks that tend to show a metallic sheen, the paper should highlight the vibrant contrast between the base color and the reflective parts. Last, consider the desired smoothness of your writing experience. Do you prefer a bit of tooth to your writing surface or do you want to write on a buttered nonstick skillet? We often focus on how smooth a nib is, but a change in paper can make a huge difference. Another personal preference to note is the paper's color. Some notebooks offer variations on bright white, ivory, and cream colored paper. These slight differences in paper color can change the ink's color appearance. Since we're discussing the best fountain pen notebooks, much of the focus is on paper quality because first and foremost, the paper needs to be able to handle the ink. However, we would be remiss in not mentioning other notebook features like page size, binding, and other accoutrements like ruling, color, cover material, and other journal things, uh, elastic bands, bookmarks, and all that stuff. The value of these aspects depends on how you use your notebook, of course. So that's why I feel there isn't one best notebook out there for all fountain pen enthusiasts, just as there isn't one best fountain pen. I mean, some people may feel differently. You could come at me on that. Uh, because writing is a personal and highly dependent on one's own workflow and writing preferences. So I picked five of the best fountain pen notebooks that we offer on goldspot.com. See if these might be a great fit for your writing needs. Now first we have the Itoya Portfolio Oasis Journal. This has smooth 75 GSM cream colored paper, no feathering, no bleed through. It's a little bit of ghosting as you might see in this writing sample that's here. A little bit you could kind of see through, um, but not too much. Perfect bound with a cardstock cover. It lays flat, pretty much flat. I mean, it could be encouraged a little bit to press down the pages, but it's pretty flat and it has a unique sort of ruling system that incorporates lines, dot grid between the lines, and then a vertical grid as well. And then the page is divvied up with these little markers here. So you could use this for a variety of different purposes. This could be like a notebook. You could write the first draft of a short story, or you could have it as a daily log because it does have the date at the very top corner as, he, as well. Um, so this could be like a workout log. It could be a nutrition thing. Uh, it could also, because of its grid uh, sort of layout, you could be concocting some sort of crazy ideas, uh, laying out uh, designs of things or, or producing web pages and stuff, all sorts of things you could uh, design with this notebook. And it looks pretty uh, handsome, a little bit on the formal side, very unassuming. It's almost as if you are carrying around a little mini pocket novel in your packet here. And it's also very inexpensive. This, this particular book is $7. Then they come in variety of bigger sizes as well. Then we have Claire Fontaine. Now Claire Fontaine's paper is made in France and it has a very very smooth 90 GSM white paper. So this is in contrast to this cream colored paper that you see here. It's a very bright white paper that then would show the ink colors I think a little bit more brighter and a little bit more uh, vibrant on the page than the Itoya would. Um, and it also does very well with the feathering, no feathering, no bleed through, very low ghosting that you would see here. So you can see because of the heavier paper stock, you don't see really anything on the other side of the page. There's a lot of binding options available with Claire Fontaine. This happens to be a wire bound pocket type journal, uh, but you could find perfect bound. You could find uh, staple bound journals. They have a, a very wide gamut of sizes as well. So you could get a full kind of A5 or A4 size type journal in Claire Fontaine. Uh, and it's basically it for any and all reasons that you would need to write. There's even a staple bound notebook that has French ruling, um, which is interesting. It's something that you might want to use if you want to practice handwriting as well, because there's a lot of smaller lines in the middle of the larger lines that could then help you with your ascenders, descenders, that sort of thing. 
Then we have Rhodia pads. And I say Rhodia pads because I mean, Rhodia does have a lot of common DNA with Clairefontaine, a lot of the Clairefontaine paper you would see in Rhodia products. Um, these Rhodia pads, I think, are really great middle of the road, and they're, I think, a little bit on the lesser expensive side than a lot of the notebooks that you would see here. I mean, these pads come in a wide array of sizes, so you could get them as small as, I think, like a two by three, uh, and then they go all the way up to like legal and larger type sizes. So uh, any and all types of projects that you need to imagine a Rhodia pad is going to be able to handle it. And this is my pad of choice and you might have seen this on a lot of Instagram and TikTok and YouTube shorts. I usually will use this to test pens with because I, I kind of feel like it's the bridge between the really super premium uh, fountain pen papers like the Japanese type papers and the uh, like more affordable type of papers that are out there uh, where it's it, you know it's going to do pretty well in terms of handle the fountain pen ink as you could see there's no feathering, no bleed through, minimal show through, and it just is a very bright, nice white paper that they use with this. I prefer usually using the, the dot grid, but there's also blank lined and graph formats as well. So really, you have a lot of different choices to go through with Rhodia, and you also have things like their goal book, which is more of a traditional journal, uh, kind of like this endless recorder. Uh, they have stickers on. Um, and a lot of other staple bound and other types of formats as well. So a lot of a lot that Rhodey has to offer as a very affordable option. That's why I would pick this as, as one of my favorites. Now I feel like the one of the best fountain pen papers out there, and I think a lot of hardcore fountain pen enthusiasts would agree, is Tomway River. I fell in love with Tomway River paper several years ago and have loved using notebooks with it ever since. This actually has the 52 GSM, which is actually kind of a little bit more rare since the original Tomway pa River paper is now becoming harder to get. They shut down the machines that make them. Uh, so there's another company that's starting to make them again, but I think they only come in the, the heavier 68 GSM now. So this 52 GSM is super, super, thin, almost like tracing paper, or as they call onion skin paper. It's very, very thin paper. It uh, handles fountain pen ink like a champ. It is. It really does play up the color, the vibrancy. You see a lot of the depth of shading. The sheen is off the charts too. It really does do exceptionally well for fountain pen ink, and it accentuates the beauty of fountain pen ink on the paper. And that's really what you're in this game for. This is why you're watching this video is you want to see what's the best of the best. Uh, so Tomoe River is definitely on that list of the best of the best. Really the only uh, downside I would say to it is if you want to write on both sides of the page, you're going to have to deal with the show through, the ghosting on this side. But there's really nothing like it else that's out there in terms of being able to have such a beautiful line and such a crisp looking line and that smoothness of the writing experience. There's really nothing that's that's like it, and that's why a lot of people uh, you know, are trying to find other things that might replace it. So, um, But that's why this Nebula Note is, is a pretty nice notebook and deserves to be on this list, is because it's a very one-of-the-kind, fountain pen-loving type of paper. And last, I have my journal of choice, which is the Endless Recorder. And this has the new proprietary Regalia paper, uh, which is beautiful paper. It's got the same bright whiteness that you would see with Claire Fontaine and with Rhodia. It has a killer ability to show uh, the shading and sheen of all fountain pen inks, especially sheen, like you're looking at uh, this Weringule Pride and Prejudice ink looks amazing. You could see that golden sheen that just vibrates off the paper. And uh, and really, the, the it's a, a lot different than, let's say, the Tomoe River paper, even though it does really show the vibrancy of the color and the shading and sheening, um, it's very different because it has a lot of toothiness to the paper. It's a very, very highly textured paper. Um, you could feel it, and if you get a little bit of like hand oils on it, if you get a little bit of something on it, it's going to end up making your nibs uh, skid a little bit to kind of like miss the mark. But it, other than that, it's it's a beautiful paper that has even though it, it really shows the color vibrantly and it shows the depth of the color, it's hardly any show through at all. Uh, it's very, very low ghosting. This type of format is a little bit more of a traditional format in journal, uh, which I enjoy for bullet journaling and for writing long form uh, types of like, a, like let's say, uh, you know, a first draft of a novel or just things like that. You could use this uh, and be able to utilize features like the bookmarks that's in here. You have the inside pocket. 
Uh, you have the elastic band closure. Uh, this thing's always a magnet for stickers for me. I like putting stickers on the cover because it's a nice, you know, hard, durable cover that's on here. But really, when it comes to a, a all-purpose sort of like landing spot for bullet journaling and for and for just diving deep with your thoughts every day. This this is like my favorite because it does handle fountain penning so well, and it just has like a really great amount of pages and uh, it just feels great in hand too. It feels more substantial and and worthy of the attention that I put into it every day. So check out the Itoya Portfolio Oasis, the Claire Fontaine notebooks the Rhodia pads, Colorverse Nebula Note with Tomoe River paper, and the Endless Recorder at Gold Spot Pens. You can't get the stickers at Gold Spot Pens, just by the way, just letting you know. Or you could enter for a chance to win all of these notebooks by subscribing to the Gold Spot Pens YouTube channel. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment with your all-time favorite notebook. We'll randomly pick one comment on Friday, April 14th, 2023. So if you had all of these notebooks, how would you use them? If you're having trouble getting your pen moving, I suggest watching this video on fun ways to practice your handwriting, as well as this video on how to journal for mental health. Subscribe to the Gold Spot Pens channel and keep in touch about all the latest and greatest in fine writing. Thank you for watching and stay inky, my friends. Take care.